Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today I would like to tell you about the classical knot polynomial. Um, so instead of a num associating a number to a, to a knot or a sequence of numbers, like for the coloring, you want an invariant that kind of encodes everything at once. And the invariant that encodes everything at once is somehow always a polynomial. So you would associate, um, so that's the whole idea here now, associate a polynomial uh, to a knot and the polynomial is an invariant and well it's very powerful and then again can distinguish quite some knots and the classical way of doing this is the due to the Alexander so the Alexander polynomial although I will present it in a way which is not the original one I will present it in a way using the Conway gain calculus we'll see what it is so the difference is actually quite crucial philosophically speaking mathematically speaking it isn't because you just get the same polynomial up to some scaling um, but philosophically speaking is very different so alexander polynomial alexander's original construction uses the geometry of the knots so it uses really that it's a three-dimensional object while the conway skein calculus is just on the projection it's just a but two-dimensional projection type operation, which is kind of very different. Turns out that they are the same, which is actually a pretty cool result. But anyway, let's have a look. Um, before I get started, I tell you something funny, which uses <laughs> the three-dimensional version of the knot. So you might wonder, um, it kind of seems to be a natural question. So in your knot calculus, if you could swap crossings, what would happen? Would the whole calculus collapse, so everything would be trivial or not? It's not quite clear. If you think about it for a second, it's not so obvious, actually. Um, your intuition should say, if you can't distinguish which strand goes over and which strand goes under, you should be able to pull every knot apart. And here's a cool way of seeing that, actually. So it's a following algorithm. It works as follows. You have you have, you have, you have our knot here, your trefoil, for example. We start somewhere. It doesn't matter where you start. And in the end, you want to produce a helix. Um, so we'll see how we produce the helix. So we start somewhere and let's say we want to go upwards in the helix. Okay, fine. So we just move along the knot, uh, just all the way along the knot. And whenever we hit a crossing, we just stop for a second. So we stop here first and check whether we go under or over. Okay, so let's just say we go, want to go upwards in the helix. So in this case, we go under. That's bad. That seems like going downwards. So we've, we've switched this crossing to going over and we continue. Uh, so this one goes under. We don't like that. We switch the crossing. We continue. This one goes over. We like it. Uh, check mark. And we continue. This one goes under. We don't like it. We switch the crossing. And eventually you hit the crossing that you've seen before and then you're done. So just leave it as it is. So here, if I start here, I would have swapped this crossing, right? Now this strand here goes over, and I would have swapped this crossing. Now this strand here goes over, and I get this projection, which is clearly the unknot. And how can you see that this is the unknot? Well, basically, this is a helix now. If you think of what we have done, at each step, we have swapped to over. So we kind of go always up, 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 up in this helix. And this is really just a projection of a helix and then um, closing ends together. So basically it's really just this one here. Um, so that's trivial. That's just an unknot. So you're done. In other words, the flipping crossing operation can trivialize every knot, right? So uh, the idea is but one possible way of seeing this is, is this produce a helix approach, and I leave it to you to write down the details of this approach. Point is, you can trivialize every knot as soon as you can swap crossings. And kind of the idea of the Conway uh, polynomial, the Conway scheme calculus, is to use that, that you can swap crossings and kind of re reduce the complexity of a knot. Okay, so here's what we do. So we just take our two crossings and we have another very simple crossing. We just uh, get rid of the crossing altogether. So locally, we should have such a picture like this. And just a slight catch, this only works really for oriented knots. So you need to put a little orientation everywhere. It's not so important, but strictly speaking, it really only works for oriented knots. Anyway, so we, we um, consider that as we have this little case here. So somewhere in our knot, we have this situation, and we would like to force a linear relation um, among those little situations here, where we, well, on the right-hand side, we got rid of the crossing. That's called the through thing. We just get rid of the crossing. That's clearly simpler. And in the middle, oh, so those two pictures are related by crossing swap. Okay, so the idea of skein calculus is always, okay, we have some invariant that I call nabla, classical notation for uh, the Conway skein uh, invariant, and it should satisfy a relation. And the relation is whenever nabla sees this picture, 
it should be well, minus whenever number sees this picture, it should be equal to this picture up to a little factor Q that I just put in here. We'll see Q in a second again. So Q will be the variable for the polynomial. But the point is there's a linear relation between this crossing, this crossing, and no crossing. Okay, so why is that a good idea? Well, let's say we have some knot invariant and we want to define it recursively. So we define it for very small knots like the unknot. And we have this relation, but we just figured out, remember we had the helix picture, that we can trivialize every knot by flipping crossings. So this means the following. So either this one, we can't decide in general, but they are kind of related by a minus sign anyway. So either this one or this one gives a simpler knot. And this one certainly is simple. I mean, it just has no crossings at all. In other words, this defines your recursion, right? So let's just say uh, the plus one is a more complicated one. Then you would have something like L plus and everything with a delta equals L, mi L minus plus L zero, right? So, um, so this is a L minus here. Um, and L minus and L zero are both simpler. So recursively, we already know the value and then we can piece everything together and we also know the value for L plus. That's the whole idea of scan calculus. It's a recursion in the complexity of the knot. And you can really piece it together in this way. So here's an example. Um, it works like this. So we just say, we just define the unknot to be one. And that's just what we do. And let's say we have computed some easier knot and we already know that it has a certain uh, Q, not Z, has a certain Q here. Um, so let's just say that's the case. Uh, okay, and then we compute the trefoil, and, and this, this is, you could convince yourself that this is a trefoil. So what we do is, uh, I, I, I omit the, the nubla everywhere, that's a bit annoying. So you look at this crossing here, and you have the other crossing, and you have the resolution of the crossing. So that's the L0 picture. This is L0, and this is L1. And this is L2. Uh, so, uh, sorry, this is <laughs> not L1 and L2. This is L minus and this is L plus. L1 and L2. So this crossing is, the, that's the, the knot you want to compute. And you hit this knot, which is clearly simpler. As you can see, you can pull this away and then get rid of this king here. Right? So this is really just the unknot. And we already said that we agree, let's say the unknot is normalized to one. And this is also an easy unknot. It has, uh, let's say it's already known recursively. And let's say we've computed this value, Q, for this recursively known knot, which is easier, has fewer crossings. Then we would know that the invariant of the trefoil is the invariant of the unknot, plus Q times the invariant of the easy unknot, which together gives one plus Q squared as the invariant of the trefoil. Right? This is this idea of the recursion. The co complicated knot that you want to compute is a sum of simpler terms that you already know by induction or by recursion, whatever you want to call it. And that's the whole idea of scan calculus. And turns out that this actually works. It's not trivial to prove that this works, but it works. So the polynomial you get defined by uh, a normalization. You just say the unknot or any diagram of the unknot equals to one and this recursion here which just uses this idea of the helix, so this high helix simplification, is actually a well-defined knot invariant. So those two rules is the only thing you need. Again, this is not quite trivial. Um, that's the whole point of the proof of Conway, I guess. And this polynomial that you get here, for example, we had one plus Q squared, so Q is my variable for the trefoil, is known as the Conway polynomial. And the original Alexander polynomial, which is historically denoted by a delta instead of a nubla, well, that's what it is. So in upwards pointing triangle instead of a downwards pointing triangle, it's, it's just a restating of this one. Um, and it's quite good. So for example, this complicated knot here has this polynomial and this complicated knot here has this polynomial and these polynomials are not equal. They differ by a factor Q squared or minus Q squared actually. So they're not the same knots. And I don't know, it's not so trivial to see whether they are the same knots or not. Um, and now we can just, the whole point is now when you have this polynomial, you can now uh, make a table of all knots and just list them. I haven't checked, but somehow the Alexander polynomial should be enough to distinguish knots up to a certain number of crossings, uh, maybe up to 10. I haven't checked, but it's, it's, it's easy to figure that out. So it's actually a pretty good invariant. And by distinguish knots, I still mean, sadly, that we can't distinguish mirror images. 
So both of them, this is again a Q. At one point, I decided to change my notation. This is again a Q. Um, anyway, so the Alexander polynomial still can't distinguish mirror images. So we have still no clue about the left-handed and the right-handed trefoil, whether they're the same or not, which is really, really disappointing. We have all the setup, a very strong polynomial invariant. It's really, really great. Again, right? it can distinguish crazy knots. Um, as I just said, there should be some statement like up to mirror images, it can distinguish knots up to 10 crossings or something. Um, so it's pretty good, actually. <laughs> but again, it's still not good enough. And it's very easy to define and very practical. Uh, and, but it's still not it's still not good enough. It's still not good enough to distinguish the left and the right-handed trefoil, which by now gets very disappointing, I guess. Uh, but that's just what it is. It just can't do it. So if you do the stain calculus for both of them, again, uh, strictly speaking, there should be some orientation involved in order to actually make scan calculus. But anyway, um, so you get the same um, polynomial. So you again, can't say anything, right? If you get the same invariant, it's just a very annoying state of the art that you can't tell whether they are the same or not. You really want a different invariant, but you get the same. Very, very sad. Uh, anyway, so I showed you the Conway version of the Alexander polynomial. As I said, the Alexander polynomial itself is defined differently, or originally was defined differently. And Conway had this idea of this recursion in the complexity of the knot, which is a pretty cool idea. So you get a recursion by just writing down a linear relation among the crossings that I called L plus, L minus, and L zero, with L zero being clearly simpler, and either L plus or L minus is, is simpler than the other, and you kind of get a recursion. Um, in the crossings to simpler knots, and you just set the start of the recursion to be, well, unknots are one, and you can compute all knots. Again, not a trivial statement. It's like you need to prove somehow that this recursion works and kind of um, different ways to, to uh, use the relation on crossings to give you the same result in the end. Um, but it's actually not so hard to prove. Anyway, we're still stuck with the left and the right-handed trefoil. So we need to go further to see what we can do about those. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.